Hello, and welcome to the American Library Association's Financial Learning Series. Anyone who's been involved with the association for any length of time understands that ALA is a very diverse and complex organization. This is particularly true in the area of finance, where the interrelationship between all of its units, programs, and activities is very strong. Whether you're a longtime member of the association or you've just joined for the first time, understanding ALA's finances can be very challenging. In an effort to minimize this challenge, as well as to provide those with financial responsibility and specifically those interested in serving on ALA committees with a better understanding of ALA's fundamental financial concepts, the Budget Analysis and Review Committee, BARC, has prepared a number of finance-based webcasts called the Financial Learning Series. These webcasts are designed to cover a number of key and basic financial concepts that staff and member leaders deal with on a daily basis in carrying out their responsibilities. Additionally, they will be available for you to access at your convenience and the submission of questions through ALA Connect are strongly encouraged. The topic of discussion for this session is the Long-Term Investment Fund, also known as the Endowment, which will be presented by Courtney Young, Head Librarian at Penn State Greater Allegheny. And with that, I'd like to turn the discussion over to Courtney. Thank you, Keith. There are six concepts that we'll cover as a part of this session. Why start an ALA endowment? How ALA endowments work? How endowment proceeds may be used? What it takes to start an endowment? Principal needed to fund a scholarship or award? And finally, how endowments are classified. There are a few takeaways that you should get from this session. First, there is only one investment account. The minimum to get started with an endowment is $25,000, although an increase to $50,000 is currently being considered by the endowment trustees. An endowment can be used to support a multitude of purposes. An establishment of an endowment should be a part of your budget process unless it is established from a gift, a donation, or a fundraising campaign. I encourage you to see the general fact sheet on the Treasurer's webpage for additional information. Reasons why you may start an endowment might be to honor a person dedicated to librarianship or library-related activity. You can see examples listed for ALA endowments, as well as a division endowment, ALSC, and a roundtable endowment, the new members roundtable. An endowment can also support an initiative or special interest of the association, a division, or roundtable. And the examples that you see here include the ALA Spectrum Initiative, ALA General Scholarships, or the GLBTRT Stonewall Book Award. Next, we move to how the endowment works. Currently, 72 individual funds participate in the endowment. That combined dollar amount total goes into, a, into ALA's one investment account. The Merrill Lynch Consults Program, the ALA Investment Advisor, are made up of 12 managers of various investment styles. The endowment trustees and the ALA finance staff all also play a role in the endowment. Now, it's important here to note that investment performance is impacted by a variety of factors. Economic conditions, the asset allocation in the portfolio is determined by endowment trustees, and the performance by portfolio managers in selecting stock. It is also important to remember that income, capital appreciation, and bank fees are also proportionately allocated to your endowment. How can you use your endowment proceeds? Your endowment proceeds can be used to support programs, for example, YALSA's Teen Read Week or the PLA Leadership Development and Webinars. They can be used to support general operations for division activities or maybe roundtable activities. 
Scholarships and awards are also supported by endowment funds and are often the types of activities that members think of first when they think of the endowment. New initiatives can also support uh, activities within the association. For example, the membership campaign or the new continuing education course development. As I mentioned earlier, the minimum to get started with an endowment is $25,000, with the endowment trustees considering increasing that amount to $50,000. This starting amount will generate a modest amount of income and will barely cover bank fees. The higher the corpus, i.e. principal, the greater the income. Another important point to remember in establishing an endowment is that unless the initial funds come from a donor or an existing fundraising effort, it must be part of the regular budget development process. When establishing an endowment, the purpose needs to be well defined. This will establish the foundation by which the endowment will operate. In many cases, the development office can be of assistance, particularly with respect to fundraising activities. The purpose of the endowment will general, generally lead directly to how the funds will be used. The final point is the approval process. Once the decision has been made to establish an endowment, member leaders and staff work on it and forward it the request to the endowment trustees for approval, who will then forward the request to the ALA Executive Board for final approval. When starting an endowment, one of the primary reasons is to generate enough dollars to fund a scholarship or award that supports the mission of the unit or a strategic purpose. This slide provides you with the sampling of the dollars needed to fund a typical scholarship or award. As a result of a change in the ALA spending policy, see ALA spending policy 8.5.1, the currently approved spending level is 4%. This slide illustrates for the typical scholarship or award of $1,000, $3,000, or $5,000 at a 3%, 4%, 5%, a distribution can be made if the 20 quarter ending net asset balance is as stated in the left hand column. As long as the balance after fees is positive, a scholarship or award can be given. Finally, what are the various endowment classifications? For the purposes of meeting audit requirements, ALA is required to classify each of its endowment funds in a specific way. The classification of where the funds go is determined by any donor established restrictions or the group setting up the endowment. Unrestricted assets can be used for any purpose. Temporarily restricted assets have limits on how funds may be used until certain conditions are met. Once those conditions are met, eligible funds are released and or will be available to cover any expenses generated in the unrestricted category. Once those eligible funds are exhausted, any remaining unrestricted expenses will be covered from the unrestricted category. A permanent restricted asset can never be touched and will live in perpetuity per the wishes of the donor, i.e. the Carnegie Fund. I encourage you to submit any questions you have about this webcast or others via ALA Connect's Budget and Finance Member Group. You can view other financial learning series webcasts as well for the budget cycle and process, the operating agreement, or the organizational structure, roles, and responsibilities. Finally, the ALA Treasurer's website has a variety of information on ALA finances, and I encourage you to look there as well. Thank you, Courtney. This concludes our discussion on the ALA Long-Term Investment Fund. We'd like to close this session, as Courtney suggested, by encouraging the viewers of this presentation to complete the survey located on the Treasurer's page. The submission of questions is strongly encouraged. We'd also encourage you to take the opportunity to replay this and other presentations in this series at your convenience and as often as you'd like. Thanks again for your participation.